Good morning and welcome back to Your Morning Manna. Today's day two, we're in Mark chapter five. We're reading through the story of the demon-possessed man. Yesterday we were introduced to him and today we're gonna get a little bit further into the story. So we're gonna pick up right where we left off. Mark chapter five, verse seven. This is what it says. And crying out with a loud voice, he, talking about the demon-possessed man, he said, what do you have to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. Interesting dialogue that's happening here between Jesus and the demon possessed man. And really this whole dialogue has to do with identity. Interesting that as Jesus is talking to this demon-possessed man, as the man responds back to Jesus, it's, it's almost as if it's not even his voice. It's really the, the demons inside of him that's tormenting him that respond because when Jesus asks him his name, he responds with legion, for we are many. Now this is a reference to like the Roman armies because a legion would be a, six, uh, would be a group of 6,000 troops. So it's like the guy is saying there's 6,000 demons inside of me. So he gives his identity. We are legion for we are many. But what's interesting is before he even got to his own identity, he already admitted the identity of Jesus. Did you notice that there? He, before Jesus said anything, the, the demons inside the demon possessed man were already crying out saying, Jesus, son of the most high God. That's interesting. Up to this point, nobody has given Jesus that authority. No one has called him uh, Jesus, son of the most high God. In fact, that phrase right there, son of the most high God, all except for one time in the Bible, that's only said by people who are Gentiles or non-believers. And so now you've got these demons calling Jesus son of the most high God, which attributes divine authority to Jesus well before any other person caught on to that. In fact, if you turn back just a couple of chapters in the book of Mark, if you go back to Mark chapter one, Jesus, he's healing another man from a, a demon possession. And this is what he says, chapter one, verse 24, he says, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. That's what the demon cries out to Jesus. He already knows who Jesus is. And later on down the same exact, same exact chapter, verse 34, this is what it says. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. It's like in the spiritual realm, they all know who Jesus is. They don't have to be convinced because they know who he is and they know that he's greater. So what does this mean for us? I don't know about you, but when I hear this, there's a sense of confidence that I get because of who Jesus is. He's greater, he's higher, he's more powerful than anything we could ever face. No enemy, no opposition could ever come close to him. And he's on my side. More appropriately, I should say, I'm on his side. And because I'm on his side, it reminds me of Romans chapter eight where it says, if God is for us, who could stand against us? That gives us confidence. May we walk in confidence knowing the identity of Jesus and knowing that the enemy also knows the identity of Jesus and they submit, they bow their knee. Remember when the man first ran to Jesus, his instinct was to submit before Jesus, to bow his knee. May we walk with confidence, casting away fear, casting away anything that would try to come against us because of who Jesus is in our lives. I love you, Mana Church, and we'll continue the story tomorrow with your morning manna.